What's going on guys, welcome to this video. My name is Cameron and this is the editing breakdown uh, for my recent boxing video. As you can see in the background and everything, I actually don't have any lights to light up the background at the minute because I just don't record videos in my bedroom that often. So last week I uploaded a 35 second boxing video to various places on the internet and a lot of people wanted me to do a breakdown of it, they wanted to know how I did certain things, if I used any transitions, what sound effects I used. Also when I was filming this video we only had an hour to shoot the boxing section and then we only had an hour to shoot the skateboarding section. Pretty much all the skateboarding you see in this video is pretty much all the skateboarding footage I had. So I think that's it, but if I forget anything, just let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, I mean it, uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll try and answer best I can. If there's any other questions that I don't answer during the breakdown, obviously fire, fire in my way as well. Thank you guys for enjoying the boxing video and I hope you enjoy this breakdown as well. And enjoy, I guess. <laughs> All right, so welcome to the editing portion of this video. Now, I've got a fan on in the background because it's absolutely roasting. So, yeah, starting light off here, uh, the timeline and everything, let's just ignore that for now. Let's go over to the left where we've got all our bins. And you can see the organization. We've got assets, boxing footage, music, nested sequences, project sequence, sound effects, and then the skateboarding footage as well. So, I should have already mentioned this on camera, but this entire project I shot on the Sony A6500. Now, I do have an A7 III, but I don't don't have a 35mm f1.8 lens for my a7 III, so I shot it on the a6500 because I do have a 35mm lens for that. So uh, the only drawbacks for that is that the a6500 is crop censored, it's not really that good in low light and the battery life is terrible, but for this particular shoot the lighting was actually really good so it didn't matter that much even though I colour graded it like this. The crop sensor didn't really matter because the 35mm was an APS-C lens which means it was made for the a6500, which means that even though it's a crop sensor the focal lens length doesn't get cropped so that was fine well according to the lens it doesn't get cropped but according to a full frame it does get cropped you get what i mean so of course the only problem was the battery life but i have like seven batteries for the a6500 so that didn't matter so yeah also this folder here saying green booth this was actually a green booth reservoir we did a shoot here with nabil the boxer it's just a reservoir near my parents house doesn't really matter that much and we shot some boxing stuff in this reservoir in this forest that I was going to use for this video and then decided not to use. So you can see here we've got him running on a gimbal. What I was going to do, I was going to have him boxing in the forest and then it transitions into the gym. But then when I started editing, I realized that it was better just to start the entire video off in the gym in the first place. So uh, yeah, I actually scrapped all this footage so we could ignore this folder. But uh, yeah, in terms of assets, we've got some dust assets. Like, like you, I don't think you can see it that much, but there is some dust there. We've got uh, the black bars that you can't see, but it's these ones here. And then we've also got my logo uh for putting at the end of the video so those are the assets and then for music we've got all my music here these tracks are from artlist except for this one this song is actually a copyrighted song by nero fun fact i edited the entire video like literally the entire video to this song and then last minute i changed the song because i knew that it was copyrighted so uh wouldn't recommend doing that but if you sort of go for a similar song that sounds like this one then it doesn't matter here's the clip of what it sounded like with this song <laughs> And then, of course, I changed it to the song that you guys know in the final video. So, uh, yeah, what else is the sound effects? These are all the sound effects. Now, it looks like there is quite a lot in here, but really, I only used, like, maybe six of them. So, and then I just repeated them throughout the song. So, I mean, the video. So, yeah, that doesn't matter. But now, back onto the timeline, guys. Before we get started, I do just want to say that most of these boxing clips in general are sped up by 120%. Some of them are 130% sped up. Some of them are 150%. But overall, for this boxing and energetic video, you want these clips to be sped up a little bit just to kind of give off that more aggressive box inside so yeah keep that in mind when we're going through this footage and i'm pretty sure i'll think of something a little bit further down the line that i need to tell you guys but for the most part yes most of this footage is sped up just a little bit so anyway moving on let's just talk about some of the color coding and all that stuff so you guys actually understand what's going on let's just make these smaller a little bit so pretty much as you can see the music is green all of the music is green and as we go further down the blue tracks all this down here is the sound effects now the blue tracks are all actually sound effects that are taken from the sound in the camera from the footage so what i mean is this this sound effect or like this sound is part of this clip and this sound is actually part of this clip. And then all the pink sound effects are sound effects that I've added in that don't actually attach to any footage. Like they're actually added in myself, you know, like the whooshes or wind noise or anything like that. And then as we go further along, we've got these orange ones and this is just all the skateboarding clips, literally just all skateboarding clips. And as you can see down here, we've got these blue clips, 
which means that the blue is actually part of these clips that was recorded like as the actual sound so you get the, the thing and then these pink ones are actually assets so as you can see this pink one at the end here is actually my logo these pink ones is the writing of my name and then this pink one is actually dust which you can't see which is really annoying so fun little facts about this that you guys probably didn't know is there is actually dust in this clip here but because of Facebook and Instagram's upload compression, it actually compressed the footage slightly. And then in the uploaded versions that you guys saw, you actually didn't see the dust, which is really sad because now it just looks like an empty space. Really depressing. So yeah, now to actually start the edit, first off, you want to go over to your bins. You want to organize all of your footage. So you go into your footage and you can see that every single one of these is color coded. So first off, what you want to do is go through every single clip and pick out which ones you like and which ones you don't like. So for me, all of the blue ones are actually the ones I don't like. They're the ones that aren't going to be used at all. And then all of these pink ones are the ones that have potential for me to use. And as you go down, you can also see that most of the clips are blue. So if we get a little bit more to the bottom you can see there's just a massive blue streak you can really see the ratio of like how much you've shot and then how much footage you end up actually using so it's always better to film way more than what you're going to use just in case you always want that extra shot that you might not get now coming down onto the timeline you can see that i faded in the first clip and i did this on purpose because obviously you don't want a clip just to randomly start playing unless it matches with the song or unless it's starting from the very very beginning whereas mine i wanted it to have a little bit of a black screen at the beginning so naturally it just goes in for that fade in and and especially if you want to create the atmosphere where it seems like the subject is thinking about something or is reminiscing on something. So uh, also when I was shooting this, you can see I've got like this rope in the foreground. Now, if I go onto the original clip, as we've got here, you can see just a little bit further back, the rope wasn't in the shot. The reason why I kept the rope in the shot was not only because I wanted to create some depth in the scene, just because obviously you've got the lighting around his shoulders and everything, but you've also got that foreground shot. But I also wanted this red tint that comes up in the rope a little bit further into the shot as well because you can see how the red contrasts against the black background which I thought was really cool. Also I could have actually had a little bit more red in here if I dropped the clip down a little bit further but I wanted Nabil to stay in the middle of the frame because if I drop the clip down it means that he would have got lower as well and uh, I want to light that because obviously we want to be focusing on him we want to keep him in the center of the frame so now moving on as I said earlier on to get this shot as you can see in the previous shot the lighting was hitting the back of him so for the close-up I actually turned him round so the light was hitting the front of him so the reason for these dust particles was just because it was sort of an empty space and i wanted to give a little bit more atmosphere like if i take the dust particles away you can see that it's kind of just I don't know, it kind of looks a little bit less lifeless kind of thing. And I wanted to sort of bring up that dustiness of like the atmosphere in the boxing gym. Now, the next clips as we're going on through, you can see down here, as I said earlier on, this audio is part of this audio clip originally from the original footage. So you can see that it's punching the punching bag. And as we transition between these two clips, I wanted to cut where the punch connects to the punching bag because obviously it creates that continuity. That's another thing. I made sure that he did the same combo on the punching bag in both angles so that I could sync them up correctly. So again, not exactly planned, but it was just something that I thought of on the spot and then we've got him punching here and uh yeah this is one of the more interesting places you can see down here this is where the music sort of transitions later into the song where it's got these constant beats going and further down here with the sound effects these are just whoosh noises uh shoelace tying sound effects as you can see here it says shoelace it says shoelaces so uh yeah that's just a specific shoelace sound effect you can probably pick that up online somewhere as i did and obviously we've got like normal whooshes and just like things that are going along with a little bit of the beat but going up over to the clips let's just get rid of actually we'll do it this way instead we'll actually bring up the original clip so this is the original clip it's literally just look how fast this happens but remember i'm filming in 120 frames per second or actually 100 frames per second and uh yeah so let's just drop this back again drag this way so we can see the details there we go as you can see i color grade it and everything but i also keyframe the position and the scale so that it zooms in on the laces but as it does it, it keeps the laces sort of to the left third slash center of the frame. So that's where the position comes into it. So the position moves to make sure that it stays in the center-ish. And one of the things that people miss out on when you are creating an energetic video or just something sports related or maybe videos in general is in order to create that energy and sort of keep that energy momentum of the video going, you always want movement. Now you saw when I shown you this uh, original clip, it was literally just the still clip like that it's literally just super fast but in order to keep that momentum and that speed of the video i actually keyframed it so it zoomed in so even though the clip's not moving it's still creating that movement it's still keeping people now this one here where the uh, where the wrap actually goes around his hand this is actually an interesting shot this is the original shot come on 
Come over here. So this is the original shot. It's literally just Nabil wrapping his hand like this. It is nothing special. So what I actually did to achieve this shot was obviously what you just saw there. That's how we shot it. So I scaled this clip up from 100 to 255 to zoom in this close. Now we're only filming in 1080p for this entire sequence. When you up the sharpness, I believe I up the sharpness to 30. Uh, so obviously it still kept the clip pretty clear, which is cool. I was actually really surprised with that. But more importantly, if we go back to the beginning and we have a look, let's take away let's take away the black bars at the top and bottom and uh, you can see look the clip has actually started rotating if you look at the corners and that's because let's go back to the clip down here i keyframe the rotation so as we go through it you can see that the rotation happens like this you can see it the reason why i had to scale up to 255 was because if i scaled it any less you would have been able to see the rotation happening like this so uh, that is one of the main reasons why it was scaled so high. When I rotated it, I rotated it in the direction of the, which like direction the bandage was turning, like the wrap was going. So you can see the rotation follows the wrap around his hand. And then it's just a simple cut. And then same again with this cut. Uh, let's see what the original clip is. The original clip for this is literally just this. Look how uh, bumpy that actually is. There you go. But when we go, let's close this again. Do this. Ta-da. Oh my god. Working on a laptop. I'm usually on an ultra wide screen, so like working on a laptop to capture this video for the aspect ratio, so you guys see it in normal uh, aspect ratio, is uh, pretty weird. But yeah, as you can see, so color grading again, the normal sharpness is just 20 again. Pretty much every single clip is either sharpness of 20, 30, or 50. You just play around with it depending on the clip. Yeah, as we go around, it's just following his wrap again, continuing from the previous clip, so it looks like this transitions to this so you can see that i've kind of put those together and then last one was the clip just here with the boxing glove this was nabil's trainer putting the boxing glove on him and just sort of doing this now if we get the original clip again it's nothing special it's literally just this of him tightening his lace just like that and that's about it so just extend this again this is probably going to have to happen like a hundred times in this video just deleting the source monitor so on this one we actually stay close up and then we zoom out as we pass back because obviously all the other ones were zooming in i wanted to have that differentiation and then it goes to a black screen but also what you've got to think about is the fact that we had the black bars in it meant that it hid those corners coming into thinking now i actually think if i remember there's a corner that you do see if I remember somewhere, there it is. Look, you can see here, you can actually see a corner of the screen that just comes out of the black bars when it's rotating. I already did know about this when I exported the video and everything. It's just that I thought it was so subtle that nobody would notice and nobody did notice. So uh, probably for actual super professional projects, you know, if anything's like being done for like a major company and you probably don't want to do something like this. But since this was just going online and everything, uh, it didn't really matter too much, especially because it's going on my Instagram as well. It didn't really matter. Music kicks in. Now the music, uh, some of you guys was asking like, the build-up part where the beat gets faster and the build-up comes with like that really sharp noise that's part of the music but the sharp noise that happens when it's coming up to the build-up when it's like coming up to here and then it starts uh it wasn't sharp enough and it wasn't loud enough so i actually went and found a sound effect in i believe it's called the singularity sound effects package on google someone posted it in a facebook group and i saw it and it was free so i was like yeah i'm going to download that i'll try and link it in the description if i can this was a gym bell this was the boxing bell that i just added in there so i thought it was appropriate obviously because it is a boxing video so uh yeah that kind of made sense so yeah something else you guys wanted to know as well was did i use any like transitions like where did i get my transitions from i didn't get them from anywhere i literally just did it they're all pretty much hard cuts like this one just starts this one just starts this one just starts this one just starts you know what i mean there's no specific transitions used it's just all in camera it's all editing it's all uh just basically going off your own ideas so both of these clips right here are actually sped up to 120 percent which is what i mentioned earlier on where all clips are sped up a little bit um nabil he's actually making a groan this is actually part of his own voice so he's genuinely groaning making this noise in this moment as he's lifting the weight which was pretty cool now when i'm filming boxing or whether i'm filming gym fitness or anything like that or an intense uh, sport or something i always make sure that the subjects always over exaggerate their facial expressions they always over exaggerate the weight lifting so even if it's their first rep i always try and get them to make it look like they're really putting their effort into it because otherwise if they're just sat there just lifting a barbell or the squatting it's not really that intense when they just have a straight face and they look like it's easy so yeah when you're filming boxing videos or sports just make sure these subjects always sort of intensify the video with like what they're doing as well and uh, obviously you might have to direct him on some of that now for Nabil I didn't really have to direct him too much uh, yeah moving onwards as well again keeping that movement going I wanted this one to follow the punch now I actually knew this when I was filming that I'd want one of these 
clips where the camera follows his punch into the pad. So this is literally just the raw clip and I've color graded it. Uh, again, it's probably sped up by 120% if I remember, let's see, or 125% that's sped up with. And we have the actual punch down here in the sound effects from the footage, as you can see, the blue one. Uh, this is the real punch, but the purple one here, the pink one, that is an overlaid punching noise as well to give his punch that a little bit more of an impact to make it sound like it really connected with the pad. So uh, yeah, like don't forget guys, you can always like do a sound effect and you can always double it up to make it sound even more impactful, even more powerful and so on, depending on what you're filming. And then next one, we've just got him doing some really fast paced stuff. Now, this is a really good example of what this looks like sped up. So this is 130%. If we bring this down to 100%, what the heck is it doing? Come on. There we go. It froze. <laughs> um, if we bring this to 100%, which is normal speed, this is the speed Nabil was actually punching at. You see how slow that was? Look at that. Super slow. That is terrible, Nabil. Terrible. You're so slow. But uh, yeah, so if we bring that back down to 130 and now if we look at it again... You see what I mean? You see how more aggressive and more intense that looks just because you've sped it up by 30%. Yeah, really interesting. And again, just the sound effects, just adding in a little bit more punching noises to make it sound that much more impactful on top of the original audio of him punching that punching bag. And then we've got this foot. Now, this clip was actually really interesting because when I was editing this, um, I wanted something where when the Beal punches the punching bag, you expect the punching bag to swing this way and then swing back. So as you begin to expect the punching bag to come back this way, I actually have Nabil's footwork come into the frame from that side of the screen as well to sort of bring back that motion and carry that motion over into the next clip. So let's watch it just from here. And you can see right there, like as the punching bag comes to swing back, it sort of carries that momentum over into his left feet, uh, left feet, what? Over into his feet coming from the left over into the right. And I've also added a sound effect, which I believe was, come on, what's it doing? Stretch back over, come on. Uh, this is a slow-mo sound effect. I believe you actually get this in Parker Wolbeck's course is the uh, sound effect of like all the whooshes and the slow-mo noises. And basically it was just that noise, that sound effect of giving like that whoosh as the feet go past the camera. You wanted something to make it feel a little bit more physical. Now this clip, this is one of these scenarios where you guys actually wouldn't even notice the difference. But this is one of the best things about editing is something can take a good amount of time and people might not even notice it. It might just pass by them like really unnoticed, but it makes the clip better subconsciously. So for this, if you look at it, uh, we're going to play it just like this. And you can see that because we're filming at 100 frames per second, we've got the shutter speed at 200. Obviously, a high shutter speed means that it's less natural blur. So when the Beal was moving fast like this, it actually didn't look that blurry at all. So what I actually did was I brought the... I actually keyed a blur onto it. I put a mask over his body. Now, if we click this and we click onto mask two, you can see that I blurred the ropes in the square. But if we also come down to this mask two here as well, you can see I keyframed a blur effect over Nabil's movements just to give him that much more blur as he's moving because he actually didn't look that blurry due to the higher shutter speed and so on. So this actually took maybe an hour to do because obviously I had to keyframe every single frame. Usually you wouldn't, maybe wouldn't have to do every single frame, but I wanted this to be so precise that I did it like this. Click off this a second, go back to this if i take the blur off where is it where am i going here it is um then it's only a little bit of a subtle difference but you can notice it on his arm that's it with it on and then this is with it off and you can just sort of see that blur be taken away now let's take it away and play it and you can see it's a little bit more clear it sort of doesn't look as more natural as it usually should do and so when we add the blur back on go back down add the blur and now when you watch it, it's a little bit like more pleasing to the eye, but you can't tell that much, honestly. It's just something that I thought I'd add just because I had time to do it. Um, but probably you wouldn't really notice it if it really didn't matter. But yeah, another thing as well is the sound effects down here. Now, this sound effect I actually used was the rope twirl sound effect. I actually just found it on freesound.org. Something to differentiate these clips between the two is that this sound was actually a little bit quieter. And then once we actually got onto the floor, which was next to the ropes, obviously it means that the camera is closer to the ropes, which means that the sound should probably be a little bit louder. So this one's quieter because it's on the beal. And then this sound effect is a little bit louder to uh, give the feel that you are closer to the ropes. And it's, again, it's a little bit more intense. Now, this sound effect actually took me forever to find. Forever. Like it took like two hours just for that. So uh, yeah, maybe don't spend that long looking for sound effects, but you know, I wanted to get it right. But moving on anyway, yes, we've got here as well. It's just another hard cut and we're going over to Nabil doing some punching. And as you can see, it's literally just 
the actual sounds of his punching that made it into this clip. So these sounds of him punching are actually the real sounds, which is pretty cool. And again, this is sped up by 110%. So Nabil is actually punching pretty quickly here, but I just sped it up that little bit more just to sort of keep it going with the energy of the music. And then again, in the direction of his punch, we have Nabil moving from the left to the right as well with his feet, getting that close up. And then a second shot of the same like sort of movements but from a second angle and as you can see down here with the sound effects we've just got some footstep noises these were just footstep noises again that i got online somewhere freesound.org is probably where i got it from and uh, oh we actually had a little bit of a freeze there stop freezing there we go so moving on yet yeah, we've got this and i actually added in a subtle zoom in effect so if you look, we do zoom in slightly and I just keyframe the scale upwards of that. So as it zooms in and again, it's just to sort of keep that audience interest zooming in on the center of the frame where Nabil is stood and uh, it just creates that movement. It creates that energy again as we're going through it. And then we get to here and this is Nabil on, is it called the ski machine? It's something like that. It's where you pull the ropes down. If we bring this like this, you can see this is the original clip and I literally just followed Nabil's movements up and down as he's dragging these down. You really want to put the audience in the action of uh, the clip and the best way to do that is to probably move the camera with the movement so i give it that more again energetic feels i keep saying and uh yeah so these i couldn't find the sound effect for what he was pulling so i just used the actual in-camera audio that was used with that which is what you hear in the final video and then we've got that moving and then we do another hard cut to nabil punch in the air again it's literally just like the color grade it's just the upness of the highlights and the whites and the shadows downwards and all that stuff uh vibrancy has been put up what's this sped up to again this clip is sped up 130 percent and something that's really interesting as well is that you can actually see the sweat fall off nabil as he punches which again really just adds to that like atmospheric like sweaty boxing workout that he's doing the intensity of it which is pretty cool and if you go down here i added in some sound effects of some if I remember, it's called fire torch movement sound effects. So, you know, like the movement of fire on a stick. So when someone wafts a fire on a stick, it makes like a noise. That's what we added in there just to sort of differentiate from the whooshy sound effect that we were using earlier on with his punches. So that's what we did. Keep going. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger so that we're not blind to it. This one's a pretty interesting clip here as well because... What we actually did for this clip was I stood back so that Nabil could punch forwards without punching my camera, but I zoomed in. So the lens I was using for this was the Zeiss lens 16 to 70 or the 18 to 70, if I remember. And uh, so I think I shot this at like 35 mil and then I zoomed into the full 70 as he punched towards it to sort of give the impression that Nabil punched right up to the lens when in fact I was zooming into his punch as he was punching towards me and uh yeah and we tried to get it to cover the entire frame so we did have to do this punch like nine times probably to get this right and then separately i also had him just punch in a punching bag so if we go to the actual clip the original clip you can see here that i literally just filmed him punching the punching bag like this and then obviously we cut those together in the editor yeah that's as simple as that is and uh, if we go down yeah we've just got some more whoosh noises some more whoosh sound effects i believe this one, what's it doing? There we go. This is just another fire torch sound effects movement. Again, same as the other one. As we got, carry on going through it, uh, we've got Nabil punching towards the camera. And in order to do this transition to the skateboarding, as you guys saw, you guys actually thought that uh, it was like a built-in transition, something that I downloaded online. But no, actually, in fact, this transition was planned. I knew that I wanted to do this. So I got Nabil punching towards the camera, obviously sped up the clip again to make it faster. And as he uppercuts, towards the lens i actually move the camera upwards towards the ceiling as he does that so he uppercuts it goes up and then the next clip which is skateboarding i shot this skateboarding clip from the floor and i moved it upwards from the floor to jake going into his ollie and skating over the box and uh, upwards capturing his face and then coming back down and as the board came back down as jake came down on his skateboard i also brought the camera back down to the floor as well so that's what we did there. So it actually ended up doing something like this, which is pretty cool as well. So no, that was not a preset transition. That was not something I downloaded online. That is literally just editing and camera movement, which is pretty cool. And to help with the sound effects and everything, I actually added in obviously some more firecracker sounds or whatever it was of Nabil's punches. And then when it got to here, I changed the song and the song then became uh see me fly instrumental which is the same song from the beginning of the video but it's just a different section and that is what creates like that really cool sound effect as it transitions into that next part and i also cut the music off as well for this and then the music carries on over here when the like video continues so this song and this song are actually both the same song it's just it had like this cut off point here make it feel like time was slowing down like everybody was stopping to watch jake ollie over this uh 
driveway box kind of thing that was going on in the skate park sped that up as well you can see right here as well if we zoom in you can see i actually sped this part up a little bit i actually sped his uppercut so if we go to here this is where it begins to speed up and then it really speeds up and then as you can see down here as well actually it's in the nested clip but you can see here the beginning of the track is sped up significantly and then it slowly goes down into 100 frames per second and then it speeds back up again after it's got there so the reason why i nested the clip as well was because i wanted to keyframe it and you can't actually have speed ramps as well as trying to keyframe uh, various parts of the footage at the same time it just doesn't work something like or at least that's what happened with me so i nested it and then i did keyframe it and what i did was now that we've removed the black bars i keyframed it so that the clip itself actually i could zoom it out because obviously you can zoom the clip out because of the black bars it hides the edges so i zoomed the clip out a little bit and then also um if we go over to here i keyframed it so that the clip actually moved upwards and the reason for this was because when the vi when the clip first starts it actually comes into his skateboard and on the original clip i actually if we get the original right here Without the black bars, you could see his skateboard and his face at the same time. But with the black bars, it obviously caught like the skateboard off and his face. So I needed a way for his face to be able to come into the frame, but also see his skateboard at the same time, or at least let's just stretch this back over here. So what I actually did was I keyframed it so that at first the frame was at the bottom so that you could see skateboard so that when it comes into the frame, you can still see it. And then as the skateboard goes up, the frame comes up or it comes down so that you then see his face and then it stops like that and then as it goes back towards the other side it then comes back down again and that is how it follows that transition so when we put the bars back in so as we show this you can see that you can see the board and then it goes up to his face and then it goes back down again so that's what that was um sound effects nothing really um it was the pop of his skateboard which was from the original clip and then obviously this one down here as well which i don't actually know what this was oh it was an explosion sound i actually included an explosion sound here as well just to sort of again give that impact that it was changing scene but also because it was skateboarding so it sort of gives off that thing so moving on it goes back down and then it is literally just a hard cut now you don't see this because it happens so fast but yeah it's literally just a hard cut right into this clip we've sped it up so that it's keyframe so it speed ramps into a fast and then slow motion shot and then i've just put my name here i originally had this as skateboarding but i was wondering why that was a bit random to have skateboard in there so instead i wanted a way to brand the video with my name so uh, this is where i put my name and uh, in order to do this i just turned the clip black and white i used the i believe it's the monochrome so basically if you turn all the colors down you don't actually get a true black and white color you actually get like the way to explain it is each color like you see how you've got red you've got like green and you've got blue and all that stuff each color has a different black level like a different black and white level so if you just drag all the numbers down to zero or whatever it is it it won't bring each color down to its actual zero level it'll just bring all the colors down to zero uh, and they'll all end up at zero on the same level which is obviously wrong because green has a different black and white point to what red does and so on so uh, ideally what you want to do is add the channel mixer effect and then you also want to uh, uh, activate monochrome and that will make the clip true black and white and then obviously you've got these settings there as well you can mess about with some of the colors that's what i did yeah and then we literally just did this i just changed it each time cutting back to color cutting back to black and white and every time it went to black and white i changed the right into blue and then every time it went to color i changed the right into white again so that is pretty much how we did that i had a clicking sound effect here as well which is actually part of the song from earlier on again see me fly instrumental the exact same song from the beginning of the video and the midway point of the video Video. so no changes there it's just a different point in the song and i also had this song which is the song that we use in the pure red leg or whatever it is uh, i actually have that song again from artlist as well still playing in the background as well as the skateboarding noises down here so yeah we just did that changing changing still in slow motion harsh cut to him putting his board because again we want to tell that story or at least give that impression that he's dropping in down the ramp to then start his journey onto doing the backside tail slide. I actually slid down the ramp with Jake to get this shot. Now, obviously, I missed him a little bit because he can't... Like, gravity's a weird thing. Like, obviously, he moves a little bit faster and everything because he's on wheels. So, uh, yeah, we had to do this shot a few times as well. And uh, so we got him popping there. We got the harsh cut to him dropping down. And then the next harsh cut to him doing the backside tail slide. Now, we did this a few times. Now, obviously, skateboarding is a really interesting thing because like, it's not like you can just learn something and do it every time. Now, like sometimes you might be having a bad day where you can't land a tray flip or you can't land a backside flip or something like that. And so this is the same thing where Jake, he actually did some really good backside tail slides and then 
for this one which was the best shot we got he actually didn't pop out as how he wanted to he actually wanted to film it again but in terms of like how much time we had and all that stuff we couldn't film it again and then as we go to this this is the part that you guys actually found the most interesting jake's doing a tray flip now the beats of the track are actually doing beats as we're going into this tray flip so every time it changes like this that is the beat of the song changing to the beat of the song and so the way i film this if i show you the original clip you can see this is the original just like that nice and clean tray and then actually if we go back in this track you can actually see that this is the clip from the beginning of the skateboarding section and i took it from this last clip which is pretty cool so that's the original and then here's me doing the exact same trick two years ago which i remembered that i actually filmed this and luckily it's kind of from the same angle now it's not from the exact same angle but it is kind of from this angle so that's me doing the tray let's just keep watching that because it's so awesome and then if we put it in slow-mo a little bit you can see that it's uh like that so yeah one more time very nice and uh, yeah, so I literally just marked these clips up. Now, something that's really interesting is this clip of Jake is actually filmed at 100 frames per second. And this clip of me is filmed at 50 frames per second. So each time I cut it, obviously this me actually moves faster than what Jake does. So the way I had to do it was I had to do Jake and then I had to cut this at the right time. So if you look, the boards actually match up fairly evenly if you go between them. Uh, now, my board would actually be spinning faster than Jake's, but the way we did it, because I actually cut back to Jake, it meant that I could actually go back and retime my clip so that my clip actually pauses whilst Jake's plays and that means that the boards can line up again. So each time it cut away, I literally just redid like the framing of the track and like rewound it a little bit and again you can see the boards are matching up perfectly there as well which is pretty cool and then as jake's feet come down my feet come down and catch the board and then as i land jake actually lands it's froze lastly my logo but uh for the music you can see right here we've got a fade in the music now one of the things that was actually really annoying was that i wanted the song to end here but obviously the song didn't end here the song actually goes way further along so i needed it so that not only did the song end but i needed it so that there was more beats to the skateboarding because these beats that the skateboarding clips change on there's only three beats in the original song so i had to duplicate the beats so that it happened multiple times with the skateboarding but then also manage it so that the beats came in and then the song ended as well so that was something that actually took me like maybe an hour to line these songs up correctly so uh yeah these things that seem really simple actually end up taking the longest amount of time so yeah that is pretty much it for the editing side of it the entire color grade basically i just made all the clips look colder i upped the sharpness to maybe 20 30 or 40 or 50 percent uh, i upped the vibrancy to 20 ish so let's just get rid this source monitor so i'll just give you a quick rundown of the color graded and everything so uh, i actually use the color tab for this so maybe if we go over to this we can see it a little bit better so you can see right right here we've got the screen nice and big let's just get rid of this source monitor because we don't need it exposure is on 0.8 we've got the color just turned down to a random setting usually sony cameras actually depict a little bit more of a green tint but for this shot you couldn't really see it so i left the tint between the green and the magenta just sort of like normal whatever the default is in the middle uh highlights as you can see are boosted up to 100 because if you turn it down i wanted that really sharp white look on his shoulders and the only way to get that was to boost that to 100 i'm surprised i didn't actually boost the saturation which i'm quite surprised that i don't know why i didn't do that but if you go to creative you can see that i've upped the sharpness to 30 and then you can see i've got the vibrance at 60 which especially in this project uh the vibrance actually just separates the red from the blue from the black from the white so that was pretty cool and then for curves why isn't there any curves there should be curves i'm very confused I don't know why there's no curves but yeah i don't know why it's not showing the curves on here because i'm pretty sure there was curves unless there isn't and i just thought i don't know there should be but yeah for the next shot i'll just show you this one because uh, this sort of depicts exactly what i'm talking about every single shot in boxing i brought the shadows down like this and i upped the highlights dramatically so that it separated like obviously it gave it a little bit more of a pop and i sort of pretty much did that for every single clip nearly this one the highlights are actually blasted up way high so it's all about creative preference you just see what you want to do like if we look at this uh same with the shoe as well so uh, yeah so let's go back over to editing you can just see this as a whole um, if we just make all this like this what's it doing oh my god i'm breaking it 
There we go. And uh, so yeah, this is the entire timeline. Let's make this a little bit higher. So yeah, that is it for this editing of how I edited this video. Hopefully I sort of gave some insight into maybe what you guys are missing out on that you could think of that maybe you didn't think of. Or if you've got any suggestions, then maybe you can tell me something and uh, you can sort of give me some advice on what I could do better and so on. Now, I think one of the most annoying things about editing is most of your ideas come to you when you are in editing. So for example, you might be filming, you'll have an idea of what you want. And then once you get into editing, you actually realize you can do something so much better. For this project, I actually just filmed everything randomly. We had an hour to film the boxing and we had an hour to film the skateboarding. Uh, and I just filmed the Bill doing his training session and this is how the edit turned out. So now before I end the video, I actually want to show you what it sounds like with just the sound effects. So let's get rid of the music and we'll just uh, do all these sound effects and I'll let you listen to it with just the sound effects. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for enjoying the final video of like whatever I made this much that you wanted a breakdown of it. I know this video is really long, but I wanted to go really in depth, sort of giving you my thought process and what I was thinking when I was filming it and how I came about doing this and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, if I missed anything out or if you've got any more questions, just let me know uh, in the comments below and I'll get back to you because obviously it's inevitable that uh, I'm going to have missed something because usually when you're editing, you sort of don't think about it. You have like a million thoughts in your head all the same time so having to explain it is just so weird like i've never had to do this before so thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time i guess next time i make a video like this see you later